Hey everybody, Ryan here coming at you with another live video. I just got out of the shower, just got off of work a little while ago. And so since it's been a couple days, I figured I'd go live. Um, I actually have some great, awesome plans in the future for my channel. And I'm not going to get really big into what it is, but... Let's just say there's going to be some different stuff um, eventually. So today, during today's live stream, luckily this time I already shared it to like Twitter and everything. Before. I don't have to spend forever trying to figure that out. All right. What's up, Dale? How's it going, man? So today in my stream, I wanted to talk about my top five. I think it was either the last one or the one before. Um, I talked about how I love Billy Wilder. I love his movies. And so I've he's been like one of my favorite directors for a long time. And I haven't really done a video, like an actual video, like dedicated to Billy Wilder. So a little bit of backstory. I had planned on before my random, very long hiatus over the last like year. I was in the middle of doing a Sergio Leone director series. And then I got up to the good, bad, and the ugly, I think. And then I stopped. And I had already taken like a little poll of who I should do next. And Billy Wilder, in my choices that I gave, overwhelmingly won. So over the past like year or so, I'm like, man, I really need to finish the Sergio Leone one, which I will be doing. And eventually it's kind of on the back burner for right now um but i wanted to definitely eventually do something talking about billy wilder because he's one of my favorite filmmakers and actually the older i've gotten um like maybe like 10 years ago like early 20s i would have said he was one of my favorites but um literally now it's like he is up there with all the greats really i would say you know hitchcock scorsese um and billy wilder for like being favorite film like favorite filmmakers of mine and he um obviously i think hitchcock is always gonna be my favorite but like right now billy wilder over the past like year has been like i've watched way more billy wilder movies than i have hitchcock which it, it was usually all the way around like the other way around I was always watching Hitchcock and I'm still watching a lot of Hitchcock, but Billy Wilder movies. All, and I always go back to them in a different way. So finally today, I was like, you know what? Today's stream, I want to talk about my top five favorite Billy Wilder films. Now, I have pretty much um, seen everything that he's done. And I like almost everything that he's done, except for like maybe a couple of his late, like his final films. And it's not that I didn't really like them; it's just they did not have that same magic. Um, but I watched um, Ninochka, like um, maybe like a month and a half ago, two months ago, and he actually wrote or co-wrote that film with somebody else, and uh, I really really liked it and um, yeah i'm pretty sure nanashko was the one that he let me look just i don't want to give false information <laughs> um nanashka 1939 uh yeah it was written by billy wilder charles charles brackett and walter wright um yeah that's an ernst, ernst lubitsch film i love ernst lubitsch um What's up, Noah? I just shot my classic movie collection video, 33 minutes. I look forward to checking that out. That might actually be the first video of yours that I see. Um, so definitely gonna check that out. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know when it gets posted and I'll be sure to check it out. Um, I'm pretty sure, um, let me make sure. Let me double check and make sure that I, uh, yeah. I'll, after I after I stream, I will check that out. Um, so where was I? I was saying, um, <laughs> I can, oh, Nanashka. 
yeah, so he wrote that, and then I've seen a lot of other um, of his movies, and I pretty much love every single one of them in different ways. Um, go ahead. I'll, I'm going to actually go ahead, because this is something that will definitely get brought up one day, is um, the one that I don't care for as much. I still have it on Blu-ray, DVD, and I still have it on VHS, um, is The Seven Year Itch. And it's mainly because of the actor Tom Ewell. I don't know. Maybe I'm just so used to more charismatic actors and stuff versus in Billy Wilder films, but I just could not connect with him at all. Not not saying like as a character or anything like that, but like he just to me is not charismatic. And Marilyn Monroe is great, but to me, um, she was not. Um, you know, I didn't watch a movie just for Marilyn, so I still like it. I don't love it. And I think it's kind of overrated. And I would have loved to have seen like somebody like Jack Lemon or something in that role. It would have been to me, it would have been so much better. Um, yeah, so that's where I stand on that. So these are my top five, and they kind of alternate every time I watch them of which one is my favorite, which um, I know like one of these has been a favorite movie of mine since I was a kid. So that would obviously be, you know, if I did a list, that would be like one of the first ones, I think. Um, but a lot of these, um, you are one of my favorite YouTubers. Thanks, Dale. You have actually been a good motivator over the past like few years since you started following me. I mean, I remember when I was doing my daily vlog channel, you were commenting on every single video and you've always, you've, and especially the movie marathons, you always keep me in check on whenever, when am I finally going to get that video up, which next year's video will be up hopefully within the next few weeks. And then I'll be doing the next marathon. Anyways, that's a topic for another video. But, um, so yeah, my top five Billy Wilder films, they are not in any particular order. Um, but I just wanted to show, show them, show them off and talk about each one of them. So which one do I want to start off with first? Um, I guess since I've kind of brought it up already, the one that has been one of my favorite movies since I was a kid. And this came out in 1952 in his Stalag 17 with William Holden. Um, I was very, I've talked about it a lot in my, um, videos and on my channel that films were like big to me when I was a kid. And that was one of the kind of things that um, 12 programs are slowly. I got into movies as a kid, other than by my mom, who's like obsessed with movies too, was war films that I watched. And then I would start watching actors that are in those films, some of their other movies. So this was one that I loved as a kid. And, you know, it's very, um, you know, basically William Holden plays a POW and it's set in a POW camp during World War II in Germany. And um, I'm pretty sure this camp is in Germany. I forgot where where it's at. I mean, it's a German prison camp, of course, but this film is about William Holden's character, who's kind of like a he's an every man for himself kind of guy. And he does what he needs to do to get by and that's bribing guards doing all that kind of stuff um just making sure that he get his delicacies like eggs for breakfast that kind of thing he's a you know he's he's really good at getting what he needs to get meanwhile there's a whole bunch of other guys in the camp and the movie starts out with a couple guys that are trying to escape and they're killed and they come to the conclusion that somebody in that barracks um ratted on them and he's an informant for the Germans and the Germans like planted him in there. So William Holden is like basically the main character. He won an Oscar for this film. And um, some of the guys think because he is the one bribing the guards and doing all that kind of stuff that he's up to something. And the reason why he has all these eggs and all these extra cigars and cigarettes is because he ratted them out. Um, and a, war drama because 
um, my connection is unstable. Okay, well, I guess it's working again. Yeah, this, I don't know what's going on. So basically, some of the guys in this film like are like comic relief and they're hilarious and it has a very comic comedic feel. Um, and then when you're dealing with the war stuff, it gets to like, you know, James L. Brooks or, um, hello, what's up, Luke? Um, he's like a predecessor, predecessor like Woody Allen films. And then, uh, Cameron Crowe, like, people who are really good at balancing comedy and drama and not in like a jarring way. And so that's one of the reasons why I love this film so much. It's a war film, William Holden. I've always said that if I could have a drink with any actor from old Hollywood, William Holden would be, um, would be the guy because uh, I mean, I'm sure he would out drink me, but I would, he would definitely be the guy. I'm, I love so many of his movies and uh, he just, he's awesome. And so, yeah, this movie um, loosely based on a true story. It was a, it was a Broadway show or a Broadway play at the time, and it was adapted into the movie. And I've always loved it. I actually just started last year. I said I was going to start watching this every Christmas because there's a big segment of the movie that takes place on Christmas Eve. So, yeah, definitely love this movie. Next up, um. Luke says he has this on Masters of Cinema Blu-ray. Yeah, I know. I, I see um, Masters of Cinema. Um, like, I liked Eureka and then, like, you know, Masters of Cinema on Facebook. And every time they, like, do, like, a new release, I'm like, yeah, I got to buy it. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I don't have a region-free player. And with this film, just because this is, like, a Warner Brother catalog title, like, the artwork is kind of generic. I mean, it's cool, but it's kind of generic. and I've seen every other release, especially the Masters of Cinema one. And I'm like, God, the artwork is so amazing. And so hopefully this is one that I could see like getting a really nice release one day, um, maybe even becoming like a criterion, hopefully at one point. But then again, I could see any of Billy Wilder's movies becoming a criterion. Uh, so yeah. So next up, I'm going to talk about, and like I said, I'm not doing any spoilers with any of these movies because I want people to watch this video and like seek out the movies themselves and kind of have the same experience that I did. So I'm kind of just doing a little summary and then kind of, uh, you know, getting you interested. Next up is definitely my favorite film noir. And that is double indemnity with Fred Mac McMurray, Barbara Stanwyck and Edward G. Robinson. When I first saw this movie, like 15 years ago, I was like blown away. I was like, holy crap. I have never seen a movie. Um, first, really an older movie like this. Older. I say older movie, even though like to me, this is like not. Wow. Leave it up to me. Luke, you probably agree with me by saying like when I think of a movie that's older, I think of like silent movies. Um, but yeah, this is 1944. 19, yeah, 1944. You know, this is a movie, movie that I, and I'll kind of tell the little synopsis about it by how I explain to somebody at work. Somebody that I work with, they really like movies. It's the person that I gave a ton of movies to. I um, told them, you know, I was like, hey, I put this away, and that's actually my first DVD of it that I have, and I gave it to him. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm not really, he's, he's from Costa Rica. He's like, I'm not really big on like old, old black. You got to watch double indemnity. And he was like, and so later in the day, we got over that conversation. I was like, Hey man, you know what movie you need to see? And I didn't even mention this yet. I was like, tell me, does this sound good? An insurance man goes to a house and sees an attractive wife. And he's like, Ooh, I need to make sure that her husband, you know, is caught up on his life insurance. And she realizes that, you know, she really wants to wants to get that get that money. And so he has um she has her husband unknowingly sign a double indemnity clause to where if he dies, she gets a ton of money. And the insurance salesman kind of like falls in love or has like a little affair with the wife. He was like, Oh man, that sounds good. And I was like, Yeah. Um 
not only that, they kill the husband. Oh man, what movie is that? I was like, that's the same movie this morning that you were saying that you had no interest in watching because it was black and white. So, but it did. And that's where I left that. So double indemnity, great film. Um, one thing I really love about this is the use of like shadow and light, like film noir. They're known for like their shadows and their uses of light. But this movie has so many scenes in it that all you see is the characters being illuminated by like the Venetian blinds that are like putting like little light streaks on them. And it's like going down the entire person's body. And it's like in such shadow to where some other filmmakers at the time would have been like, Except Fritz Lang. I could see Fritz Lang doing it, and I could see like Hitchcock doing it, and maybe some other ones. Basically, I could see other people. I don't know why I said I can't see anybody doing it, but mainstream-wise, it wasn't being done a lot. Oh, it actually shows like on the front cover kind of like a instance of what I'm talking about. But uh, it just sets the mood and the atmosphere so well that it just has that noir. Like, like you almost feel like when you're watching the movie, you got to have like a little freaking scotch like on the rocks and like yeah sitting back in your chair and i don't smoke but i feel like you have to have a cigar or something like that when you're watching the movie you're like yeah i'm into this i don't know meanwhile i'm like just at my in my house on my recliner laying there watching it whatever see this is why going live is funny because this stuff is some of this stuff is stuff i would edit out and luke will probably get a laugh out of this but if i tried editing this out um I would probably accidentally leave a little snippet in. So it'd be like, yeah, so I watched this movie a bit, 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 bit. And that's why, well, because I have a, a little rough around the edges style editing. It's my signature. Next up to like, this is the movie. Okay. Sunset Boulevard. This is the movie. I feel like you could say the name of the movie to anybody. And they've been like, okay, that's sounds like old Hollywood. And, uh, it's, I mean, this movie kind of speaks for itself. I mean, William Holden plays a bar and he just hides and drives his car into a skipping and stuff right now. I apologize, everybody. I'm waiting for that. It's unstable. Pardon. Well, it doesn't say pardon while we try reconnecting. All right. All right. It went away. So, and so she has like this idea that she's going to have her major comeback. And so she's like, I want you to write basically ghostwrite my my comeback film and she's like i'll give you money so he's like oh money i need money i'm about to get kicked out of my house my car is gonna you know and then it turns into a master manipulation and basically she's his like gigolo basically and he just kind of wants to have a normal life now eventually and um she's not willing to give up on him that quick and uh this is another one of those great film noirs that are just beautiful. Every freaking frame is just amazing. So, I mean, come on. If you're watching the stream, I'm sure you've seen Sunset Boulevard. At least if you're, have you, if you've watched a lot of classic movies. Um, next up, I am going to be talking about one, really these two movies right here are the Billy Wilder movies that right now I would say are my favorite, like my favorite films of his. And so they're kind of tied. That's why I saved them for last is off and on out of print randomly. And I was able to get the twilight time a few months back. And it is the fortune cookie with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. This came out in 1966. It was Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon film as a director who is a sideline cameraman. Receives the ball and runs and is tackled. And he kind of runs into Jack Lemmon when he's filming with the camera. And he runs into the camera and runs into him and he falls over. And they think he has a concussion, so they bring him to the hospital. And uh, Walter Matthau is his brother-in-law. And he's a lawyer and he is a shady lawyer. He's always, he's an ambulance chaser and everything. And he's like, Hey, um, do you still have that scar, that scar in your back or that mark in your back from when you broke your back when you were young girls kind of stuff? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, I think you got a case. And he basically makes him sue 
the NFL, the TV studio and all this stuff for millions of dollars because of, um, you know, how they you know, and so that's kind of like where the title comes from. He's like a fortune cookie. And, uh, so that leads to, I mean, this movie and like, he connects with Jack Lemon's like ex-wife and all the stuff. And it is hilarious. Um, but it's really dark too, because it really shows greed and, um, just how people can be when money's involved and how their, the families react. But, um, he kind of puts Jack Lemon through some crap. And not only that, the football player that did the damage, he thinks that he almost killed this guy and he really didn't like, like it's kind of, it goes through like a, a little crisis of frame of it. Um, and it's one that I just, I could put, this is one of those films that I could put on if I'm feeling bad fortune cookie last and certainly not least it is, I got this from arrow Academy and, um, this is a film that I had always, I mean, I know mom's still alive, but the stupid thing keeps saying that it's having issues. Um, this is a film I always wanted to see. And I think I saw parts of it back in the day because it won best picture in 1960. And of course being a Billy Wilder film, but I didn't see this film until like a couple of years ago and it blew me away. Um, you know, Jack Lemon plays a guy who works at a company and, uh, he's just a swell guy, basically, from what all the corp the big wigs say, and they think he's swell because they let let them he lets them use their apartment for their little adulterous situations, cheating on their wives with women, and uh, this was a very risque topic at the time, but uh, he finds himself going through like the ranks of this company because of everything that he's doing. And you do, you even though like what he's doing is bad, like you feel bad for him because it's all out of pure manipulation and these guys are just treating him like crap and using him. So he falls in love. He, he starts to fall in love with the woman, an elevator woman there played by Shirley MacLaine, who gives one of the greatest performances for an actress that I've seen because of some of the stuff that, she goes through and some of the lines that she says it's heartbreaking and she is like just so um innocent even though she's like having these uh, having like affairs um like in the movie like you know she she's basically having you know in a tug of war match you know the synopsis of the movie kind of says she's basically sleeping with his boss and even though she's like doing the lives or not it's not full of the meaning that they want it to be. And it's, they're letting all these big guys kind of determine their outcomes of their lives and they're tired of it. You know, the questions that this movie like brings to the table about like men and relevant even to this day. Um, and you just can't help but root for Jack Lemmon and her to get through the other side happier than where they started. And uh, this is definitely like one of the greatest films i I've ever seen as well. Uh, this one in Style like 17 are in my top 20 favorite movies of all time. This one quickly went to that route because it was just so powerful to me. And uh, yeah, just a great movie. So yeah, those are my top five Billy Wilder movies. Sorry that I've kind of um, lagged from time to time in the stream. It kept popping up that there was like connection issues and it was very frustrating because I don't want to be like talking and then you guys not even being able to see anything. Um, so that is it for me talking about the Billy Wilder movies. So let me go back to the chat. Um, see if there's any questions or anything. Noah, the video will be up in about 90 minutes. Sweet. I will definitely check it out. Hopefully this evening. Um, Dale says, I always like going back and watching the very fro hilarious just because it's like, okay, it's this. And all you see is like a slight reflection in my glasses. Everything else is in dead shadow. Um, yeah, it's funny. Um, Luke had, yeah, I just read that one, read that one, read that one. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. 
I will see you again in a few days. Be sure to like this video. Um, like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, and definitely comment if you're watching this after the fact. You know, it says my videos are raw and uncut. Just shoot and upload since I'm a bit new. Yeah, that's how mine were at first. Um, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. That's why I'm going live because it's easy to do. I don't have to go through the stress of editing. And uh, I'm putting out content. And I've actually felt so much better over the last few days since I've been putting up videos again. Because if, this was a pretty big part of my life for a long time. And to kind of lose the passion for it. And I'm getting it back. Um, and I love it again. And in a video I did the other day, or my last live stream, there was one part where I kept on messing up um, towards the end. But I caught it in time when I reposted the video, or when it, um, after it went live. And I had to, I actually, I don't really care. Um, the people that are watching, that are actually watching this video, know know how i am with my videos and know me and i don't have to feel like i have to be a polished you know person because i'm just, I just do this i started out doing this just to share my love of movies and that's what i kind of you know continue to do to this day